Alright, so we back with another video. Today we coming at y'all boys with something a little special. Now, I had to do two different versions of this. One gonna go up on a, a podcast channel where I did this with chat, but this is gonna be my actual real version. Now, uh, when it comes to the small forts, uh, we're gonna do the same way, but we got the different tiers. Now, if you wanna say like the superstar, the all NBA, the all star for the tiers, that's kinda still the same, but there's not gonna be a single person that is in the same tier of a person that shouldn't be in the same tier. So, um, if there's no debate for you to be better than somebody, you're never going to be in the same tier for me. It just is what it is. And that's why I had to make my own because, yeah, it just is what it is. Now, with that being said, we still got to do the power force. We still got to do the centers. If you guys do want more, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe. I'm trying to get this stuff out as soon as possible for the playoffs so I can give y'all my playoff uh, bracket. All that good stuff. So, yeah, if y'all do want more of these, make sure to join the support by liking the video, subscribe. All that good stuff out the way. Let's hop into it. Let's go! All right, so hopping straight into it, man. We have tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five. If we got to add more, we shall. Let's hop into it. So, first person, Sadiq Bey. I don't know where I will put him. Um, He's a good... I mean, he's an inconsistent shooter, um, inconsistent corner shooter. Um, he's an inconsistent defender. Um, he's really a 3 and D guy, but that's he's inconsistent at really both of those things. So, I'm going to put Sadiq Bay at 5 for now. Jalen Brown. That's interesting. I have no clue where to put Jalen Brown. JB, for now... Now, see, I don't want to be in the same predicament as what I did with Jalen Green, where he just starts hooping. I record that video in advance, and now I look crazy. But JB hasn't had that great of a season, but post-All-Star break, he's been way better. So, I'm going to put JV, because you know, I've always been a big JB guy. Like, two years ago, before Tatum took that jump, I was always having them debates between JB and Tatum. I always saying that those are those two players are way closer than people act like. Um, I think it's still a little bit closer than people act like because JB is not as bad as people say and Tatum is not as good as people say. But at the same time, there's there's two completely di different tiers of players at this point for sure. But Tatum, yeah, he's gonna be tier one. Um, there will be organization to it, so don't worry about it. Uh, Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson hasn't been as good this year, but I think he's just a little bit more consistent than a Sadiq Bay, so I'm going to put him in Tier 4. Brandon Miller. I think Brandon Miller is a pretty simply obvious Tier 3. Now, Brandon Miller and Jalen Brown, I think I would have to go Jalen Brown as a tier higher because there's no debate, but like it's sneakily you could debate it because he's been pretty solid, but it's kind of like JB's on the best team in basketball with like four other really, really, really good players that can go for 20 every night. So his stats are going to be a little bit swayed where Brandon Miller is playing on an injury riddled team where he's as a Ricky is having to kind of really carry the scoring load night in, night out. So it's kind of a touch comparison. And JB has actually been pretty solid defensively this year in comparison to last year. So, yeah, Brandon Miller, uh, I'm going to have to put you there for as a Ricky. But J Bree Miller looks really good. He looks a lot better than what people was trying to say. When I when I seen him in college, I seen a lot of comparisons to, like, KD. Then he's had the thing that come, came out about Paul George. And he, I'm going to be honest, he's kind of already overshadowed what his hype kind of was. People was always saying that you're crazy if you take him over school. Um, and this, that, and the third, and people was even trying to say Eamon Thompson. Hey, shout out to Eamon Thompson, though. The bro, maybe the most athletic guy in the league right now. I'm not going to. Eamon Thompson is crazy athletic. But, yeah. Uh, DeMar DeRozan? DeMar DeRozan is a really, really tough one because, he, in my opinion, DeMar DeRozan is not giving you the two-way ability that JB is giving you. DeMar DeRozan, in my opinion, is not giving you that off-ball perimeter shooting that JB is giving you. He's a much better... I don't know about much better because JB's mid range is actually really, really good, especially off the dribble. But it's just the issue with JB is like his um, not really shot creation ability, but playmaking ability because he's not really. We all know what the the thing is with JB. I don't think he's the same tier as JB, but I do think he is. He's definitely high end tier three. 
I kind of am having a hard time saying that there's an argument for Brandon Miller to be better than uh, DeMar DeRozan. But I think it actually is closer than you people think. I'm not mad if somebody says Brandon Miller is better. I think it's low-key disrespectful. But I, cause I think he's clearly better. I just think they're on the same tier. But I wouldn't be surprised if somebody said that he's better. Because he's definitely a better defender. He's already probably a better passer. And he's already a better three-point shooter. At this point, DeMar DeRozan is really only a better mid-range scorer and he's better in the clutch. That's really all DeMar DeRozan really has over him. And I probably would still take him because of the experience. But Brandon Miller is pretty much already better at three ball. He's probably better at getting to the rim because DeMar DeRozan at this point is kind of old and he's not as athletic as he used to be. And Brandon Miller is just a significantly better defender. So, yeah, I'd probably say DeMar DeRozan is better. But there's, there's things that Brandon Miller is just giving you that DeMar DeRozan isn't giving you. So, it's just it what it is. Max Struess. I'm going to put Max Struess over Sadiq Bay, man. I'm going to be honest. Um, coming into this year, I was really, like, at, if I was to say which one I'd rather have as a Heat fan, Max Struess or Gabe Vincent, I would have told you time, times out of 10, Max Struess. Max Struess was always a kind of underrated defender that, bro, he was a, a floor spacer, not to the level of Duncan, where, like, even if he's missing, like, people are going to guard him and, like, respect his game. But Max Struess had a little bit more shot creation to him, whereas he could get into that midi. But now, I ain't going to lie, Duncan clears him offensively. I ain't going to lie, because Duncan is giving you a lot more than just shot creation. He's giving you playmaking ability, where he can get to the rim at will. He can create for others. It's a lot of stuff that Duncan's giving you that's really underrated in this game. But Max Struess, I'm going to be honest, he's, one thing that he'll give you is that spark plug energy in the clutch. And I don't think Duncan is giving you that spark plug energy in the clutch to be honest. And he's and Max Drews have done that for like three years now. So, yeah, I give Max Drews that. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr. Call me crazy, but I'm taking Max Drews over Tim Hardaway Jr. Now, Tim Hardaway Jr. is a spark plug. He's probably more consistent as a spark plug. I think Max Drews is just a more consistent three-point shooter. Um, Tim Hardaway, it's not a conversa conversation I'm trying to have for real, but... There's a difference between a shooter and a scorer. Like, Stephen Curry is kind of both, but he's more of a shooter. Damian Lillard is kind of both, but he's more of a scorer, if that makes sense. Like, scorers, you kind of need rhythm. Shooters, they can, that thing can, they, they don't really need too much rhythm. they just shooters. they real shooters. You know what I'm saying? That's, it just kind of is that simple. Like, scores, they can really score from anywhere. Like, real scores, but they just need a rhythm. Once they get going, they can really, like, the, the rim look like an ocean. And Tim Hardaway is the definition of a score, but his shot IQ, um, him and Clay probably have the worst shot diet in the league. Like, they'll make one shot, and, like, that next shot is going up, no matter what it is, no matter the defense. It doesn't matter. It's going up. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr. may be worse than Clay with that because Clay is an all-time shooter. Tim Hardaway is not that. He's just not that. Um, Michael Porter Jr. MPJ is a really tough one too because I think he's a guy that's like a shooter. He's a better shooter than anybody in Tier 5. But he's also giving you, he's not the greatest defender, but he's actually, he gives you rim protection and rebounding. So, like, if he's not knocking down his shots, he's six foot ten, so he can, like, give you size. Like, if you need to get size around the rim. Like, when they played the Heat, bro, the Heat was super undersized because they had a 16 small fort and a 6'11 power fort. So, like, they had mixed matches everywhere outside of Jokic. Like, everywhere. Like, Jokic was always a mismatch. But having size mismatches is every position is really, really nice to have. And NBJ is, like, yeah, he's giving you that. Uh, so he can give you scoring around the rim even when his shot is not falling. Um, but he also can give you the rebounding. He also can give you the shot uh, shot blocking ability. Now, with that being said, playmaking, he's not giving you really anything. He's not really giving you anything. So um, that can be a detriment at sometimes. But for that team, they don't really need it because they have the best playmaker in the league. But this is a really tough one because, in my opinion, Cam Johnson hasn't been – he hasn't been great. In my opinion. He hasn't been great. So I'm honestly arguing, do I put him on the same level as DeMar DeRozan? I just don't see there as a, I don't see no, there's no possible debate. Like, he's a much better shot blocker 
He's a better probably rebounder, but it's not as significant as you would think for size. And he's definitely a better shooter in terms of three-point shooting. But, yeah, like scoring-wise, DeMar DeRozan clears. It just is what it is. So I'm going to keep him in Tier 4. And the thing is, do I make another tier for Cam Johnson? Because I don't think he's on the same tier as these guys in Tier 5. To be honest. Because then I can probably I could probably slide up Max Juice. But I'm going to keep it like this for now. Asar Thompson. Asar Thompson was supposed to be like the better scorer of the two. But um, I don't think he's a better rebounder. I don't think he's a better defender. He's definitely not a better playmaker. And neither one of them can shoot at all. Like, they have, neither one have any shooting ability. They actually both have really good feel for the game. Um, they have really, really solid IQ for young, stupid, athletic guys. I even think Amon is more athletic, so. I don't really mean to say this in a mean way, but he's like a lesser version of his brother, but he's a little bit better of a shooter. Like, and that's not saying much, but he's a little bit better version of a shooter. Like, he's a, le he's a lesser version of everything else, but he's a lesser shooter in my opinion. But with that being said, I think, since, like, if he was on a, a different team, like, put a Sar Thompson in one of them uh, Christian Brown, Peyton Watson roles on the Nuggets, I think he may be better than those guys. I think he might be better than those guys because he could come off the bench in, like, one of them Aaron, Aaron Gordon roles, and he'll be really, really crazy. So I'll probably put him on Tier 4. The thing is, bro, with Tier 4, though, I don't know if he's the same tier as MPJ, bro. But you can really level it up like Asar Thompson defense, MPJ shooting. That's like a, you can cross that out. Rebounding, he's a better rebounder than MPJ. Playmaking and, see, then you're just trying to, like, MPJ's a better player. He's a better player. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Uh, Aaron, Andrew Wiggins, I was going to call bro Aaron Wiggins. Hey, Aaron Wiggins on the Thunder is actually pretty tough too. Pretty tough. I didn't really like him that much last year. I like him this year though. I'm not going to lie. I actually like him. Um, Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins has a, had a pretty tough year, but I'm going to still put him here. I think he's better than everybody else under him. Um, he's been a little bit better since all-star break, but he hasn't had a great year. Either side of the ball. He's been better on both sides since the All-Star break, but yeah, he's had a pretty tough year. Um, Dylan Brooks. I'll put Dylan Brooks right here. Dylan Brooks is giving you pretty solid shooting this year compared to last year, and he's arguably a better defender. So yeah, I, I like I like Dylan Brooks. Hey, the Rockets are... I don't know what's going on, why they play so much better without Pinson Goon, but I think that post-offense where they slow the game down with all those athletes is kind of stupid, looking at it now. So, like, Sengun is probably still the best player on the team in comparison to him and Jalen Green, but I think their play style is better when he's not playing and Jalen Green is the best player available because they just play way faster. And the and the offensive sets that they get into without Sengun are actually pretty... I'm not going to lie, even Udoka is getting them into some really st interesting stuff. Like, I'm looking at uh, them running Eamon Thompson dribble handoffs with Fravin Vliet setting screens and Jabari Smith setting screens to get like off ball switches and all different, but I'm liking, like, I'm liking a lot of stuff they're doing to get, uh, Jalen Green some easy looks and to really make Eamon Thompson not be as much of a negative offensively because he's not a great shooter. I like, I like some of the stuff they're getting into. Um, Buddy Hill, Buddy Hill is one of the best shooters in the league. He doesn't really give you much else though. He doesn't really give you anything else. He's one of the best shooters in the league. He's like literally one of the best shooters in the league. Like, I don't know what number I would put him at, but he's definitely one of the most consistent shooters in the entire league. Like, it's just it what it is. Like, it's just it what it is. Like, I really believe if you give him 10 threes a game, he can make, he like, he's almost automatic to get three or four every night. Now, that's at the least, I'm saying. Like, he can go off for a crazy night. He can have a bad night, for sure. But everybody has bad nights. Everybody has great nights. I'm just saying what the medium would really be. Um, I think Buddy Hill... A little bit more consistent. I may gotta put him over... Cam Johnson this year because Cam Johnson hasn't been that crazy this year. 
He's just giving you more. Like, the defense is better. Cam Johnson's a better shooter, but he hasn't been a great shooter this year. Kawhi. Kawhi's tier one. Kawhi's been, like, Kawhi's been much better defensively than he has been in the last two, three years. Um, not come playoffs, because Kawhi goes up to another level in the playoffs on both ends. It just is what it is. It's been like that for a couple years now. But he's also played more games. Offensively, he's still very efficient. He's just having one of those slept on Kawhi years that always just seems to happen. Like, I feel like the revisionist history on Kawhi is crazy. Like, people act like Kawhi is just all, like, since, like, 2016, people act like it's been, like, a clear gap between him, Curry, uh, KD, Braun. Now, if you want to say Braun has had, like, in 2016, had a clear gap, maybe 2017, but... I don't think it's like those four players have had. I think LeBron was art, like probably the best player all the way to like 18. But like, I don't think it was like a clear gap. You know what I'm saying? Kawhi, especially when it compared to KD and Curry, I don't think it was a clear gap. Like Curry in 2016 was crazy in the regular season. But playoffs, he wasn't that good. Like he was injured. Um, he played through injury. That's all that ha- all that happened. But like he wasn't better than uh the other guys like like a significantly gap better like he was he probably better but he wasn't a significant gap better especially when they include the whole year he probably was better i probably have him over him but yeah and then after that nah i just don't see how you can say that 2017 18 19 20 20 maybe i ain't gonna lie 3 1 was crazy but curry wasn't even healthy that year for real so i don't know um paul george see paul george is a tough one because Paul George is actually a pretty tough one because I feel like some people want to put him on the same tier as Jason Tatum. And that's just overrating him. Paul George is really closer to JB. He's better than JB, but he's closer to JB than people think, in my opinion. In my opinion, he's be- he's closer. That's my opinion, though. Uh, LeBron... Coming into the year, I thought Tatum was the best small for in the league. I don't think Tatum has been as good as he was last year. Just it what it is. Um, LeBron still being as good at this age is actually kind of crazy. Like, it just is. But with that being said, is LeBron better than Kawhi? I think I think it's a – I think Tier 1 is going to have the most debate, debatable players because, like, those are clear-cut, like, debates that people have. Like, who's having debates between MPJ and Asar Thompson? Like, who's having those debates? Who's having Max Struess, Tim Hardaway debates? Who's having those? So, yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't know. But Tier 1, bro, it's like, those are real debatable players. I'll put LeBron in Tier 1, but I don't know how to rank him. I really don't because he's a far better playmaker than both. He may be more consistent scorer than both. He might be. It's just Kawhi's efficiency scoring-wise is just way better. Um, I take both of them over Bron defensively, but I'm not gonna lie. When LeBron locks in on defense, even still, it's like he's still really good. It's just he has to lock in. That's the issue. Like it's just when it, when is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? Is he waiting? Like I don't know. It's just really random with LeBron. Um, that being said. I'm not mad if you say Brian better than Tatum and uh, Kawhi. I j- I'm really not, but yeah, I may gotta put Brian over both. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Brian ain't had the- okay. That's probably what I have to say. You could argue. You could yeah. I probably do it like this because Brian' impact on his team has kind of been weird these last two years. Like last year. Post All Star when he got injured, they kind of were better after the All Star without him. Now we know what happened with the trade deadline and all that, so that's the context of that. But even this year, they kind of been a little like they kind of been a little bit better without Bron, it's, and that's like really weird like to see Bron impact kind of slip away a little bit because we all know like Bron is the guy when it comes to though. If you want to have a debate about somebody that could carry any type of team to the promised land, that's that was Bron. So, uh, it's just kind of weird. But, yeah, Bron still not – still being in that area better than 
Guys like Tatum is still crazy to me. But uh, Santi Aldama, I'm going to just throw you down here, bro. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is tier one, but it's like he don't give you nothing that these guys give you in tier one in the play, in the regular season. It's just the playoffs. Like, playoffs, he's just significantly better. Now, if you want to say he wasn't as good post-round one, who in this tier one had has had a, a better series in the last 10 years? Than what Jimmy did in round one. And then the year before that, that was literally Jimmy's best playoff run. That was his best playoff run. So, like, it's it's a, it's it's definitely a thing at this point. I was always a person that said Jimmy Butler, playoff Jimmy is fake. Like, that shit, you could damn near just look at 22, 22 as a fluke. But I ain't gonna lie. What he did in round one against the Bucks, I, I, you could say he fooled me, but he sold me with that one. I ain't gonna lie. Because, like, he got hurt game one against the Knicks. And he just wasn't as he wasn't the same athletically in the rest of those playoffs. It just is what it is. Like I'm looking at bro blowing by Drew Holiday in round one, and then after that he's struggling to blow by with much slower perimeter defenders. That was a literal fact. He was literally struggling blowing by much slower de perimeter defenders than, than Drew Holiday. It just is what it was. So yeah, I really did think I do think that that ankle really did mess with him the rest of that because he he didn't just injure it that one time he aggravated a couple more times and he just was playing through it so yeah jimmy butler tier one um him and tatum in my opinion if you want to say those two guys could be in their own tier because i'm not really sold on tatum being better than significantly like a whole gap better than jimmy i think he's better but i ain't sold on like there being a significant gap bro especially come playoff time i'm taking jimmy over tatum i ain't gonna lie I ain't gonna lie. Come playoff time, I am. But regular season is no, it's no debate. It's just no debate. Chris Middleton. I put Chris Middleton, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Chris Middleton tier four. Chris Middleton can be overrated, but I ain't gonna lie. I think he's been, he been all right this year. He been all right this year. He been better than I expected him to be. I ain't gonna lie. Coming into year, I would have probably had him in. I probably would have had him behind. Probably would have had him right there. Not gonna lie. That nigga ain't nowhere much better than what I'm thinking. I'm, it's just that Andrew Wiggins is significantly worse than what he was last year because I'm literally looking at it, bro. I would have had him behind Andrew Wiggins for sure. And all the other players are worse. They're just worse. But, like, the only reason he's better than Andrew Wiggins right now is because Andrew Wiggins is significantly worse player this year than he was last year. It's just in the year before that. It just is what it is. Uh, Jay McDaniels. I would put Jay McDaniels top of four. I think his defense, um, he's not Jonathan Isaac, you know what I'm saying? Jonathan Isaac is crazy, but one of the best defenders in the league. Bro, I may got to do like a, a defense of player tier list. Like when I put like the top 30, top 50 defensive players, and we really rank those guys because it's some crazy defenders in the league right now. Because I'm really thinking about it. Is he top five? Because I'm like, bam. A.D., Victor. Then you got guys like Jonathan Isaac. McDaniels may fit right there. He may be right there. But there's still a couple guys that you could throw in there in the conversation with him right there. But he may be right there. That may be his slot. That may be his slot. But those other four, in my opinion, are better. They're just clearly better. I can't really think of nobody else. But Nick Claxton, but he hasn't had a crazy year this year defensively, in my opinion. Trey Murphy. Um, I like Trey Murphy. I put him at the top of, I put him above, I put him above MPJ. I think he's a more consistent defender and shooter than MPJ. I would, I, not even consistent. I think he's a better shooter than MPJ. MPJ just has the size over Trey Murphy. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I think he's just a much better shooter and defender. And he's not. He's more likely to pass the MPJ, so that's another positive. Josh Hart. Josh Hart is like the consummate role player. I'll put him right here. I ain't gonna lie. All these guys should be in their own tier. All these guys literally should be in their own tier. All right, next is uh, J-Dub. People don't want to have these convos. I'm telling y'all right now, people don't want to have these convos, but J-Dub is... J-Dub is right there. J-Dub is right there. If we talk about the full season, he's right there. Now, post all star break, JB has been better. JB has been better than J Dub. But if we talk about 
full season, J Dub is right there. J Dub has been J bro, people were saying Chet was better like for the first three months. I disagree. J Dub has been the second best player on OKC for the whole season. Now, if you want to say like it's close, for sure it's close, in my opinion, because they're giving you two different things. Like J Dub is like a second uh initiator. He's a, a great shot creator. Um, and he's giving you more defensive versatility, whereas Chet is giving you the stretch in the floor ability, the high efficiency ability. J Dub's giving you high efficiency, but at the big man spot, it's more valuable than at the guard spot. And then he's also giving you the rim protection that really is like the super impactful thing that people will try to say what makes him more important or better than J Dub. But I feel like. J Dub giving him a lot more playmaking ability and shot creation ability, and yeah, I feel like their interior defense isn't really what makes them good. I think it is their perimeter defense personally because when they play against a real true big, Chet is a great shot blocker, rim protector, but he can get bullied inside easily. He doesn't have the size Victor has to like make up for his his like his frame if that makes sense. Like people can just out physical him. Victor can just outstretch the physicality. Like, it doesn't really, like, the physicality can affect him, but he can really just outstretch the physicality. Like, when you have a 7'5 guy with an 8'3 wingspan, yeah, you can kind of just make up for physical. You know what I'm saying? It just, it way it is. He can block pretty much anything around the rim. So, it's just really what it is. Chet doesn't really have that. He's seven foot with, like, a really crazy wingspan, but at the same time, it's not 7'5", 8'3". It just isn't. So, it's just not the same thing. Lou Dort. I think Lou Dort and Josh Hart is just right there around the same area. Just it what it is, in my opinion, um, personally. But that's just me. Um, Franz Wagner. Franz. I'm really high on Franz. I would put Franz in tier two. I think Franz is a really, really good tier like player. I think defensively in tier two, I would argue Franz is the best defender in that in that tier. Offensively, the other three are better. Franz has kind of let me down a little bit shooting-wise this year. But I think as a playmaker, Franz, you could debate, is the best in Tier 2 as a playmaker. I think J-Dub is a better playmaker, though. I think I think J-Dub is a better playmaker. Let me just make sure that's known. But um, 6'10", shooting guard. Like, there's a lot of stuff that Franz does that you can't teach. It's just it what it is. People kind of sleep on that with uh, Paul George, too, though. I ain't going to lie. But he's in a small four tier list for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't make this tier list, by the way. So, yeah. Uh, Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris has actually not been bad this year. No troll. I ain't going to lie. I may take all these guys over Tobias Harris, though. I ain't going to lie to you. I may take Josh Hart over him. Tobias Harris probably is the best scorer in Tier 4. But Josh Hart is giving you hustle, defense, rebounding, physicality. And he still can he can he still can be a floor spacer at the same time. And he's not a bad like playmaker. You know what I'm saying? He's a better playmaker, in my opinion. He's a better rebounder, and that's crazy. Like, cause Tobias Harris is not a bad rebounder for his position, but Josh Hart for his size is probably the best rebounder for his size in the league. Like, it is it what it is. Pound for pound, rebounder. It may be Josh Hart. I'm not going to lie. Like, inch for inch. All right. What the hell am I talking about? All right, bro. I, like, uh, all right, bro. You get the point, though. I think that all these other guys may not be as much of a score, but they're giving you much other. They're giving you other things significantly better than Tobias Harris. And, like, I'm going to be honest. Being a score is nice as your main thing, but if you're not in that, top two tier thing scoring being your most invaluable thing that you're bringing to the game as a role player in my opinion can kind of be outdated especially if you're not giving playmaking and especially if you're not a great shooter if you're not a great shooter and scoring is your best like output like by far and you're like third or below player on your team it's kind of kind of tough kind of tough to really argue any higher than that josh akogi is like right here kd in my opinion i'm i'm gonna be honest bro kd hasn't been as good as he was last year but like small four position hasn't just 
Like, Jimmy Butler hasn't been as good as he was last year in the regular season. Um, Tatum hasn't been as good as he was last year. Bron has been about the same. He's been about the same. I ain't gonna lie. Um, he's probably been a, a little bit worse. But he's been about the same. Bron had some crazy stretches last year. I, I think people got to sleep how good Bron was last year. But Kawhi's been more efficient than he was last year. And he's played more games. So I think Kawhi's been better. KD's been worse. But... I think he's just been a little bit more consistent than all these other guys. Um, now, if you want to say KD's been better because of defense, I'm not mad at it. But offensively, that's what we know KD for, and he's not been as good offensively. That's what I'm saying. But I think he's been a better playmaker and defender than he was last year. I do think that. But he's had he's been kind of asked to do a little bit more of both of those things. And that may be why he's been a little bit less efficient as a scorer. But KD is still KD. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. The fact that KD is still KD... Braun is still Braun, and Kawhi still, like, Kawhi in 2024 is kind of sad for all these guys below them. Not even not Jimmy and Paul George, but everybody else, like, maybe not DeMar DeRozan either, because all these those guys are kind of old. But, I mean, it's not really big on, I mean, but look at all the other guys. Like, J-Dub is in, like, his third year, second year, actually. J-Dub is in his second year, and he's, like, a top. Six, seven player on this list for me. So, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Uh, Shaden Sharp. I actually like Shaden Sharp. He hasn't played a lot this year, but I would still probably put him. I'd probably still put him. Shaden Sharp is kind of tough to rank, man. He hasn't played a lot of games, but Shaden Sharp is actually a pretty solid defender in my opinion. He's a pretty solid scorer in my opinion. He's just kind of inefficient scorer, but he's he can shoot. He's a good three ball shooter. He's one. Of, Shaden Sharp may be the most athletic guy on this list since Bron is getting up there in age. Shaden Sharp actually probably is the most athletic guy on this list. Um, so like it's hard to stay in front of him. He's just too athletic for a lot of guys. Um, three level scorer, good defender. He's just a little undersized for the position, kind of like J-Dub. But his athleticism kind of what makes it up for it, where J-Dub's wingspan is kind of what makes up for his height. But I'm going to put him at the back of tier four because, like, he's just been unhealthy. But I think, honestly, I'll probably put him here. I'm going to put him there, actually. That's why I'm going to put him. Harrison Barnes. I'm putting Harrison Barnes here, bro. Keldon Johnson. I think Keldon Johnson is right here, personally. Actually, no. Nah, that's name. I'm, that's off name bias. All right, next, Scotty Barnes. I think Scotty Barnes is actually solid this year. Scotty Barnes is kind of hard to rank. If we're talking about the whole season, Scotty Barnes has honestly been better than JB. Has he been better than J-Dub? J-Dub's been a better shooter, been a better shot creator. I ain't gonna lie. Scotty Barnes averages more assists, but J-Dub is a better playmaker. His shot creating ability, where you have to kind of respect him more out on the perimeter a little bit more, he may not average the same amount of assists, but he's just a better playmaker and shot creator that it just makes it easier to get open looks for other guys than it is for Scotty Barnes, if that makes sense. But Scotty Barnes is a better finisher. He's a better rebounder. He probably is a better defender. He probably is. But I think that's closer than what people think, bro. J-Dub is a very, very, like, underrated player. That's a tough one, Scotty Barnes and J-Dub. i probably put Scotty over him. He's kind of, he probably is asked. Nah, J-Dub is on a better team. He's just on a significantly better team. In my opinion, he's not the number one option, but he's like debatably the number two or three option. So like you could really say he isn't asked to do as much for sure. That's a tough, that's a tough, that's actually a tough debate for me. Because uh, what's his name definitely is more versatile defender. But I would say J-Dub is a more... No, Scotty Barnes is more versatile, definitely a more versatile defender, but I would definitely say 
Jake Dub is a more versatile offensive player, like way more. He can play, he can play the spot up role. He can play the own ball role. He can play pick and roll. He can run the ISO. He can do he can do any type of offense you really need him to play. Like if you wanted to play off ball, you wanted to play spot up. You wanted to play on ball. You want to play pick and roll. You want to play the you know what I'm saying. The only thing I say about Scotty Barnes in that conversation, Scotty Barnes, he can be the pick and roll roller. So like. He can be the pick and roll ball handler, and he can be the pick and roll roller. So that's kind of valuable too. So I don't know. Um, Lori, I'll put Lori right here. Lori is like the best off ball guy on this list. He probably is the best off ball scorer on this list. He's, nah, KD. Besides KD though, besides KD, Lori probably the best off ball scorer on this list. Yeah. Lori is, yeah, Lori offensively, he clears everybody in tier two probably. Maybe not J-Dub. J-Dub may be better than Lori too because J Lori defense is not, is not on the level of any of these guys in tier two. Damn, bro, it's kind of, bro, I can see what people are kind of saying with that, with that Lucas shit now because like, how much better offensively do you have to be for a defense to kind of like have some sway? I can kind of see it now a little bit. I can kind of see it a little bit. I definitely think Laurie is better than Scotty. Because, like, they kind of asked to do the same thing on both teams. And that really depends on who you think is a better team. I think Laurie has a better coach. But I would argue Scotty has a better team around him. Let me think on that. Maybe not. I ain't gonna lie. Laurie kind of got some young guys on there. Like, Chris Dunn is a solid defender. Collins Sexton can give him some points. You know what I'm saying? I don't mess with John Collins. But, like, Keontae George is a hooper. That's a bucket. Walker Kessler, really good rim protector. Um, and then you got guys like Taylor Hendricks. You know what I'm saying? So, you. But I like I like quickly a lot. Artie Bear, I'm not crazy about, but I think he's. He's probably better than really anybody on the Jazz besides Laurie. And. Jory Clarkson is also nice, but yeah, Laurie probably does have a little bit more scoring help. Laurie is actually a really tough one to rank because of the defense. Like, I don't think he's a horrible defender. I think he's like a really good defender for his size, especially for his versatility that he can do. But he's like, he's not like good at anything. It's just like he's not bad at anything. Like he's cool at everything, pretty much. Off, like he like he's a lot better than you would expect for his size. He's just not a great rim protector. Like, he was a great rim protector for a 7-foot. He would probably be for sure over J-Dub. That's a tough one. I'll probably still put him over J-Dub, though. I ain't gonna lie. Um, Kesberg. I'll put him there. Jay Crowder. I'll put him here. That's the tier list. Um, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I think that's a lot better than... Hey. I expected it to be too much different, but I think that's a lot better, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, tier one and tier two, I think the players that are in those tiers, I think those are, like, the right players. Now, if you want to say, I don't really see how you can say Paul George is a whole different tier than those guys. I think the only ones you can really say that's in a, that you could are you probably not in the same tier as those guys is Jimmy in tier one, Paul George in tier two. People are going to try to say Chris Middleton should be higher. I would highly disagree. But yeah, like there's no like there's no argument for like saying Jimmy's not on the same tier as these guys if we're talking about the entire season, like because playoffs matter. When playoffs happen, Jimmy is in that tier. Like they're better. But are they better in the playoffs? <laughs> like like are they actually better in the playoffs? Like are all five four of these guys better than Jimmy in the playoffs? Like, it's not a gap. In the playoffs at all. Like, like at all. Like, him, him, AD, and D-Book was really the two, three best players in the playoffs besides Jokic. Besides Jokic. Like, those were the three best players in the playoffs besides Jokic. Like, Tatum was up there. He'd probably be right behind those guys for me. But, like, those were probably the top five guys in the playoffs last year. And then you had... The year before, Jimmy was obviously a top five player in the playoffs. Obviously. Like, I wouldn't even debate. So, I don't know. That's just really my thing. Um, if you, uh, I am a Heat fan, so you can try to say I'm biased. I've been saying trade Jimmy for years, though, because I don't think we're ever going to run a ring with this build. 
But with a hey, with Bam hitting threes, <laughs> it's moving me, man. I always said you can't win with your two best players not facing the floor for each other, and those two guys are now shooting the ball better than ever. Hey. Don't let the heat get healthy, man. Hey, if y'all do want more videos like this, make sure to like, subscribe. All that good stuff out the way. Knock it out the park. Boy, finish about the bit, man. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah!